Hi, good morning. Um, we're going to tag team this presentation today. My name is Jubal Harpster. I work for Microsoft. I run the Open Maps Initiative uh, within Bing. Uh, this is my colleague, uh, Nikola Todic, who leads the development team in Serbia. He's going to be doing the bulk of the presentation today. Um, and so the, the, the agenda that we want to talk about is um, sort of what we've been doing with OpenStreetMap and open data uh, in the last couple of years at Microsoft, um, including the buildings data. Um, and then we're going to show some of the work we've been doing in Australia, um, including a live demo, which um, we think is going to work. Um, so why are we doing this? And so within Microsoft and within Bing in particular, sort of the goal here is to surface the best possible data to our end users. Um, so we have a mix of proprietary data and open data. The, the goal is to surface the best data available across geographies, no matter what it is or where it came, comes from. And in many cases, OSM is the best data um, for some layers in some places, certainly not, not everywhere. Um, we also think that with Microsoft being open about this, um, that we can help facilitate the growth of OpenStreetMap within sort of growing the community. And where we have maybe 5,000 contributors a day, we'd like to see 50,000 contributors. And we'd like to see more businesses jumping into this, um, which is why we think it's important for the, sort of the larger corporations to, um, to get on board. Um, so Microsoft, I mean, we have a lot of stuff, but what we don't have, a uh, big fleet of cars. Um, we don't have um, a lot of telemetry data. We don't have um, a big mobile footprint. I know, I'm sure a lot of you are not using your Windows phones. Um, and we certainly don't have a lot of unlimited funding. So unlike some of the other corporate people that we work with that have, can throw money at this problem, we don't, we don't have that. Um, but what we do have, uh, a lot of brilliant engineers. Um, we have almost unlimited capacity because we have, we have a cloud, or Azure. Um, we certainly have a global reach. Um, we have a ton of imagery, um, which is a huge asset. Um, we have a search engine, um, which is important because we know exactly what people are searching for. And, and we know exactly what's important. Um, we also have a lot of lawyers. Um, and the lawyer thing is really important because, it, you know, when I started, I thought the lawyers are here to sort of hold us back and be blockers. But it actually, once we, once I got them to understand what we were doing in the context of OSM, um, and there's nobody, in OSM, there's nobody to contract with, and there's nobody to sue. And so we have to have these really mind-bending um, conversations between legal and operations and engineering to actually get this right. And we'll be talking about some of that today. Um, and so the challenge that sort of was put to us and this team um, is because can we serve the Microsoft ecosystem and our customers um, with open data? And you know, I'm sure not a lot of you actually use the Bing Maps desktop uh, every day. Um, but we actually, when we put data into the top of the pipeline, we have to serve this entire Microsoft ecosystem. And you think about all these logos on here. Each one of these within Microsoft is like a separate company um, that needs to consume this data. And it surfaces, surfaces at some other endpoint. And so just the internal traffic is several billions of transactions per day. And so the data that we feed in at some point will pop out in Excel or Power BI. So we have to be very careful about how we assemble um, the open data with proprietary data. Now, I'm going to hand this over to my colleague now to finish the bulk of the presentation. I will be adding colorful commentary. Thanks, Jubal. Uh, hey, everyone. So I'm Nikola Todek. Uh, I am the engineering manager, Microsoft, uh, working on this project from Serbia. Uh, we're a small team of about 10 developers, and uh, we like to think of ourselves as somewhat a startup within Microsoft, and I think it's super appropriate for us to be doing OSM. So I'm going to start by uh, talking about the buildings that we recently uh, shared with the community, as well as shipped on Bing Maps. Uh, so we essentially, uh, it was sort of a two-fold effort. Uh, our building repository was uh, quite sparse. Uh, so the decision has been made to actually take OSM buildings and display them on the buildings layer for Microsoft uh, in Bing Maps. Uh, and the other initiative was uh, since OSM as well had um, some sparse coverage, particularly in the most important market for us, which is the US. Uh, we went on uh, this journey of uh, extracting the buildings from the satellite imagery. I'm going to have uh, Nicola, uh, my colleague, talk about this at noon. So we managed, just a uh, quick recap, we managed to extract 125 million buildings in the US. Um, let me do a quick demo of this. So this is... Oh, Yeah, so this is Yakima in in Washington State. Uh, these are all computer extracted buildings. Uh, 
Okay, moving back to the presentation. And as some of you may see, we, get, we released all the data um, under ODBL, and it's available on GitHub for download. Uh, some of the problems we ran into for using OSM buildings, uh, tagging consistencies. So we will have certain like uh, land use church or something like that, uh, and then we just put a whole big kind of building across the whole block. Um, we have unknown buildings and um, overlaps with the current base map since uh, we're using data from a different source to display roads. Uh, they're going to overlap sometimes with the buildings, but we're fine with this. Uh, the other project, actually, the, the major investment for us this year was actually uh, to take OSM data and other open source data and essentially assemble a map of Australia that we're going to show on Bing Maps. Um, and yeah, it's live. So we have an experiment going uh, with actual live user traffic uh, seeing the OSM based uh, map of Australia where we do essentially all of the services that Bing Maps supports today, such as routing, geocoding all on top of open data. So yeah, why Australia? So we didn't want to do something small. We wanted to do something big, yet still uh, not too big in terms of user traffic footprint. Uh, Australia was the obvious choice for multiple reasons. Um, we could easily carve it out of the existing map and put a different Australia in there. Uh, the Australian government, absolutely fantastic work from their end. They open sourced a whole bunch of uh, road sources, address sources that we could leverage. Um, yeah, and warm beaches, yeah. Um, the one thing that I want to emphasize on this previous slide is that there's a very active Australian community um, that's sort of at the top of the list when we think about which, which market to tackle because uh, being able to sort of work alongside of the community is extremely important to have some success. Um, and the fact that we spoke a common language made this, made this uh, really easy for us. Yeah, we heard uh, there was a presentation the other day about the editorial team who had tremendous help from the community. So that obviously helped. And yeah, the, so this is, this is an engineering challenge that has been bugging me for a while. So Bing never had the infrastructure to actually what we call flight data, meaning we didn't have the capability of pulling, actually having two data sets side by side being served uh, by different services uh, based on a parameter. Um, and yeah, so and then we had to secure capacity and it's hundreds of machines. And while we do have a whole bunch of machines, provisioning them is always hard. Um, and that somehow worked. Uh, I was actually fascinated how we actually pulled it off. Because it's all dirty details within the code that hasn't been touched for years. Um, and the demo, yeah. So. Yeah, so what we see here is the OSM-based Australia. I mean, it's Bing Map styled, uh, and Jubal and I know the little tricks how to tell uh, what's our map versus the other map. And then um, I'm going to talk about what we actually got uh, from OSM, but mainly the, the base map richness of the features uh, is mm, great. And it, we really think that this is going to bring out uh, the best that Microsoft can show to our customers. Um, the route.
Yeah, so this is OSM based trialing, so purely based on OSM. Um, auto suggest you saw also works. So all of this works essentially on top of open data. Uh, so as I said, uh, and we, we really looked hard in comparing the OSM data compared to other data sources out there. Uh, we find that it's very up to date. So we have the newest road constructions built up uh, that nobody else has. We have it in OSM. I mean, we collectively. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. And we have a lot of mm, cartel features, mountains, rivers, etc. cetera. Um, what we don't have, admin boundaries, uh, so essentially uh, sub-state sub -state level polygons, uh, populated places, neighborhoods, that's quite sparse. Addresses, we have very few addresses, address points in OSM. Um, turn restrictions, we had to work really hard on, our editorial team did, on closing the gap um, on turn restrictions and the, the paved, unpaved road attribute, which is quite important in Australia. There's a whole bunch of unpaved roads in the outback. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about that in the upcoming slides. So you can see here, uh, OSM has um, essentially roads that on the imagery are still being constructed. Now, I mean, they have been completed, but uh, no imagery is showing that. But we can definitely leverage this. Um, just some quick facts, numbers on these things. I mean, they really make the map look absolutely fantastic. So these are the gaps uh, that we encountered uh, on the image. Uh, the red dots are showing the, essentially the points from our reverse geocoding test set that couldn't be fulfilled using OSM data. So I mean, the pattern is uh, busy populated places get uh, labeled by polygons. Uh, the outback doesn't. Um, we have 100,000 address points in a country that has on the order of 20 something million people. Uh, so we actually had to use a different data source, which is unfortunately uh, not compatible uh, with OSM, but um, we just put it in a different layer and we pulled that data in. Um, so, when we started, the editorial team, when we started uh, looking at turn restrictions, we had on the order of 10,000. Uh, now we have about 65,000. And we think we still m are missing about 10,000. Uh, the good thing about this, though, is that uh, the number of routes that actually do get impacted by missing turn restrictions is only at about 0.4%. We would ideally like this to be even lower, so we're going to continue working on in this space. Uh, but uh, so in the Bing UX, we always say, well, there might be a turn restriction that we missed. Uh, we used uh, computer vision to do uh, the detection of paved, unpaved roads. So um, what we did essentially is classify the tiles. Um, for them to, to essentially say, is there a paved road on this tile? And then we took the OSM way and then um, saw which tiles it intersects. And then we took sort of a majority vote on this. Uh, with this, we managed to, to reach super high precision. Um, and then we created the map roulette uh, with the roads that we thought had an invalid attribute set uh, for the community to, to take a look at this. Uh, we had talked about this. Um, lots of new data added. When we started looking at the data uh, back in September, we had a fair amount of missing uh, road names, street names. 
fair amount of missing roads. Uh, that gap got um, filled quite consistently and well uh, by both the editorial team and the community. So um, this was another hard part for us because we obviously have our own legacy data model uh, and we needed to squeeze in the OSM data in there. Uh, I think what really helped is the loose schema, meaning only three types um, and then everything else is documented uh, on Wikipedia. So that helped a lot. Uh, however, we had to do uh, the, the parent-child relationships. Um, we had to infer that uh, using geometries. Uh, that was the best way to do it. Um, and then modeling the term restriction signposts, that was also quite hard. Um, but I guess we managed to do that as well. So without further ado, uh, I want to open this for questions. I'm sure there's, there's going to be a lot. Thank you. Thank you for your talks. Yeah, so there are a lot of questions. <laughs> so we start in order like this. <laughs> so the, uh, the stuff you're doing with the paved and unpaved roads is terrific. Um, is there any chance that you could apply the same model to, in particular, the US and make the data available? Absolutely. Question? Thank you. For Thank you for the interesting talk. I have a question with respect to turn restrictions. Can you give us a comparative estimate how that compares to commercial data sets, how complete they are with turn restrictions for Australia? Uh, how does it compare to which data sets? Here, TomTom, Tom, somebody else. Um, I. I think OSM still lags behind others. Um, as I said, I think we miss about 10,000 10, real world ones. Uh, I don't know how, how many of them others have. Uh, I know that OSM is missing 10K. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, you said that you did Australia because, partly because of geopolitical uh, stability. Uh, you come from the Balkans, and so my question would be, uh, would you imagine doing the same in a place like Afghanistan, for example, or any war-torn uh, country? What would be the problems uh, in doing this work? Oh, absolutely. So we do expect to have issues with that. We, we sort of didn't want to jam everything in there. Uh, but we're going to use, uh, we're going to craft the data in such a way that it's consistent with Microsoft policies on geopolitical um, situations. So we're going to have to modify the data one way or another. Yeah. From the technical point of view, uh, the hardships for that are just we have to remodel the, recarve the data on our end. It's not, it's not too dramatically hard. So on one of the slides, you mentioned that for some data sources, you secured an like, exception or something by, for ODBL or something like that. So could you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, so, so we work with the local community to help get uh, CC BY waivers um, with the local government. So Australia and its different, you know, its various states, eight or nine states, sort of have open data policies, but they all slightly different. And so we work with the local community to go to the government agencies and get, uh, make, make sure the data is compatible with ODBL. Um, we created a new wiki for that, um, and we put all the verifications and official letters uh, inside of that wiki and, and made that available to the, to the broader community and sort of, sort of used you know, the Microsoft resources to unlock additional data as corroborating sources of ground truth um, in Australia. You added XYZ information, which is not, let's say, necessarily available like today on OSM, but you can reference this data set that you've helped procure from the government, et cetera, as ground truth for the edits you've just made. That's right, yeah. So, so, in, so in every case, when, when our team makes an edit, um, we, use the, you, we talk to the community to make the proper source attribution tag so we know exactly where that data came from. Uh, so uh, how did you come up with the numbers on the turn restrictions? Because I would love to repeat the exercise for other countries. How did we come up with that? So we essentially 
sampled a lot of routes. And then we kind of saw where we're missing turn restrictions based on looking at street side imagery, uh, satellite images, so horizontal signalization. And then we essentially extrapolated this uh, across the number of turn restrictions that we actually have in there. Time for a couple of questions. Hi. In your building extraction work, is the focus solely on footprint generation, or are you also working to uh, extract any kind of attributes like height or land use type usage? Uh, no, no, no. We're just doing the footprints. Um, essentially, for the other information, we would need to leverage other sources other than, uh, than satellite imagery. But we definitely want to explore this field further, so, such as areas of interest, um, et cetera, heights. Thank you. There are other questions? OK, thank you, so.